Hey guys, I'm really excited. I just picked up a Scott Strike E-Ride 930. It's an E-Mountain bike and it's a mid-range bike, so it's not gonna be like a super expensive top of the line one, but I still really enjoy it. So I've been doing enduro riding, dirt bike riding for several years now, and I've added mountain biking maybe about three years ago because I needed a way to do some cross training when I only had like an hour or half hour or whatever to get out on the trail. Um, and I also needed some midweek cardio and I do not wanna go to the gym. So mountain biking is a really kind of perfect combination of lots of different like training things that I get that make me better on the enduro bike or the, the dirt bike, which is mostly why I do it. I've also started to really enjoy it lately. It's been a way for me to do the training that I need to be really effective on the dirt bike, but it's also let me bring my family along for the ride. So we've got e-mountain bikes for my wife and, and the two kids and it lets everybody crank the power to where they need it to be able to keep up with me. Let's be honest, I'm like the I'm typically out in front, not anymore. They're faster than me uh, in many cases when they're when they're on the power, but um, it lets everybody get the workout that they want. So the kids can come along and have fun using the motor. Uh, my wife and I can get a really good workout. I can turn it down a little bit if I'm climbing a hill or whatever, and I can really push into the hill and get the workout, the cardio and the muscle building that I need while everybody else is out there having fun with me. So it's been a really nice family activity and a good way to sort of draw dirt biking skills into this cross training environment, which I really like, and I don't have to go to the gym, which is awesome. So I wanted to, I got this new bike. Actually, my wife and I, we, we both got one, but to set this up, I wanna talk about e-mountain biking. It's taken off in popularity hugely as like motors and batteries have gotten way better in the last couple of years. There's a ton of models out there. You can spend anywhere from, I think I bought a Costco sort of generic version for like 1200 bucks or something like that. Um, it's nothing to write home about. And then, you know, you can buy like a Husky model, like branded e-mountain bike for 12, 13 grand. You can probably spend more than that. I'm not super familiar with the market. I'm also not that good on a, a mountain bike in general. I'm way, way better on the Enduro bike, but I'm learning. I think that when they first came into the market, there was kind of this gatekeeping, this stigma from professional mountain bikers who were like, dude, like if you're gonna be able to ride down the hill, you've got to earn the hill. Well, first of all, fuck that. There's no earning it, whatever. Like we're all out there trying to have fun. And that's certainly what I'm there for not competing professionally so there's no like cheating involved but the other thing is that like not everybody's at the same skill level so even if you have two riders who are both going to huff and puff and do the work to ride a manual bike up the hill chances are they're not going to do it at the same speed and if you want to go out with your buddies and you want to ride together or you want to take your kids who are never going to be able to keep up with you like obviously like my daughter's 12 she's not going to ride at the same pace as i am uh there's just no way and so putting her on an, on an e-mountain bike lets her keep up with me. So there's lots of really good reasons. Never mind people who have like, I don't know, disabilities. I have arthritis and asthma in my case. So I'm not using those as excuses, but like there's lots of stuff that's in play. And I think that e-mountain bikes have really become kind of this great leveler and that like anybody can get into the sport. Anybody can go learn how to hold lines and hit the brakes and ride and, and you know, climb obstacles and all that stuff, get a good workout out of it and the bike can close all the gaps between the riders and keep everybody riding together. Even when I'm going out by myself, I really like using the power because I'd rather do 20 miles per hour on the power, getting the same workout, than going four miles an hour up the hill, getting the same workout without the power. So I'm gonna go three or four times as far, of course, to get the same, like I, I wanna ride for an hour, I want my heart rate at 140 for an hour, whatever my target is. For my cardio workouts, it used to be on my manual bike. I'd go climb a hill, I'd do a thousand feet of climb in four miles or whatever the local hill here is you know and it would take me 45 minutes to climb and 10 minutes to drop back down or whatever well i can go in that same 45 minutes and i can do that climb plus like a whole other circuit and again i'm doing it at like 20 miles an hour so it's just a lot more fun and what i've actually noticed ironically is it doesn't actually get easier to ride an e-mountain bike because it's exciting and when you're excited to do it and you're like hustling along and you feel like you're on a dirt bike you're actually putting more effort in. So I find that my heart rate is at least as high coming off the E-Mountain bike as it ever was coming off the other bike. And I'm having a lot more fun. The wind's blowing through my hair. It's a lot cooler because of the wind, um, which is a big deal here in Southern California. It gets super hot in the summer. And, and I'm like traveling, I'm going places on the bike that you know I would have taken me that hour to climb the hill. And instead I'm doing 30 miles in this loop around my neighborhood, which is cool. I, I think there's a ton of reasons, whether you're taking your family along, if you're just training by yourself, if you just want to go further, you want to see the trails, like there's really no downside to it. And look like you work out as hard as you want to work out just because you have an e-mountain bike doesn't mean you have to turn it on full power or use the power at all if you really want to be a purist and you want to go like hit that hill and sweat your ass off like by all means do it but then when you go with your buddy who's twice as fast as you you can also crank the power on and keep up with him so i really don't see like any downside to it the particular bikes that I got are in the $5,000 range. So there really are mid range bikes. But the big thing I want to point out is it's always going to be suspension. Um, that's, it doesn't matter if you're buying dirt bikes or cars or mountain bikes, like 
when you come off of the peak pricing, you're giving up suspension. That's basically what it is. In every other respect, the Scott E-Ride that I'm on is a beautiful bike with a, a lot of really convenient features. It looks good. Um, it rides easy. It's, it's like very nice to use. And it's got the same motor and powertrain that a lot of other bikes um, are using in that, like e even in the top segment. One quick thing to note about the power, and then I'll shut up and we'll get out on the bike, is there's a couple of different styles of drivetrain that you can get with an e-bike. One is direct drive, so the motor's actually sitting in the hub of the rear wheel. Those are okay. Often those will be bigger motors. So like my daughter's on one with a 500 watt motor, but it's in the rear hub. Now, the problem with that, like it works great and that bike actually goes faster than any of the rest of ours. The downside to it, uh, it's great for her because she's a kid, she doesn't weigh very much, like it works out. But the downside to it is that it, that motor doesn't have the benefit of the gearing that you'd have as you pedal. So even if she gears into a lower gear, that motor's still pulling at the same torque ratio, which means that for somebody bigger like me to do serious hill climbing on that bike, the motor's actually a little under torqued. Um, it's great for like beach cruising, it really hauls, but it can't pull like a full size adult reliably up a really steep terrain, just, just doesn't have the torque. The more like purest mountain bikes that I'm riding, um, the motor is actually mid drive. So it's right there in the, the pedal hub and it benefits from the gearing effect. So when you change the gears, you're actually changing the gearing for the motor as well as for the pedals. This motor is only 250 watt motor in, the, in these Scott bikes, and it actually can put more torque to the rear wheel than the 500 watt motor that sits in the rear wheel on my daughter's bike. So that's something to keep in mind if you're looking at different styles of bikes. Depending on how much you weigh and the kind of riding that you want to do, those are factors that you'll want to play around with. I know they make way bigger e-bikes. They get all the way up to like, they're getting really close to motorcycles at this point. Um, I'm not in that territory. Like it's very much a mountain bike. You definitely have to pedal the pedals and there's no way to make the motor push other than to pedal the pedals and add some of your own effort. Um, it just helps you scale your effort to the terrain or to the guys you're riding with or whatever. So uh, with all that nonsense out of the way and before we get on the trail and I, and I let you um, hear my thoughts about the, the bike and ride some really cool single track, I wanna show you really quickly. We make a line of helmet chin mounts for action cameras. So here you can see the GoPro that I run. We make these GoPro chin mounts for like 65 different enduro helmets, uh, dirt bike helmets, adventure riding helmets, whatever. We've got a few mountain bikes in the lineup and as I push deeper into mountain biking, we're adding more of these. So we're gonna have this one up in the shop hopefully pretty quickly here. We've got a few, like we've got a 60 and a Troy Lee Designs mountain bike helmet already in the lineup. Um, but chin mounting is a really cool way to capture point of view footage. You're gonna see some of this on the trail here in a second where I'm doing the review of the bike while I'm riding it but it's just a great way to like get that perfect point of view perspective that moves with your head but gets the camera as low as possible so that the obstacles in the terrain have as much depth perception as possible um, minimizes that fisheye effect of GoPro and similar um, action cameras so uh, link in the description to our shop all kinds of blog articles and videos and resources and like I said there's like I don't know 65 70 models and growing so there's just just check out the links in the description there's a ton of stuff there you can also see our Instagram channel where we do our dirt bike here, dirt bike riding and we post a ton of content, 90% of it shot with the cameras mounted up on chin mounts for the various helmets that we run. So definitely want you to check those out. And then of course, like and subscribe to YouTube video because, or to our YouTube channel, sorry, because we've got a, a lot of really cool content dropping. We do how to's, but more exciting, we do this podcast series. And we talk with like, uh, we had Graham Jarvis as our first guest. We talked with Cody Webb and Anthony Johnson and Cooper Abbott, and we have a ton of fun with them and you don't want to miss those episodes. So like, and subscribe so you can catch those. You can also find them on Spotify and like Apple, Apple podcasts if you're interested. Let's go ride the bike and I'll tell you what I think of the Scott E mountain bike. All right, guys, we're going to rip these out of the boxes. I think we have to put the pedals and handlebars and whatever on. So let's get them unpacked and see if we have it. So Oregon e-bikes has this cool program where for like a little extra in shipping, um, they'll actually do all of the initial bike prep. So it comes set up. I just have to put the pedals on it and um, I don't know, I guess it just, I mean, the handlebars have to be straightened, but it should be um, otherwise pretty much ready to go, which is awesome. And because it's in Oregon, they don't have sales tax, which means that the shipping and setup fees actually come out less than sales tax would be at the bottom locally, which is cool. Oh yeah. This is how I roll the trick bike. Got to straighten it like that. So I'm on the Scott Strike e-bike. I'm pretty excited about it. It's a mid-range bike, so it's not gonna have the top end components of of like a ten or twelve thousand dollar, you know, top of the line e-mountain bike. You mostly feel that in the suspension, of course. The drivetrain is actually the same one that they put on like the 
Husqvarna and other top end um, e-bikes. The brakes of course are Shimano hydraulic brakes, pretty standard system, work excellent. The power is phenomenal on this bike so it's got plenty of power to pull you over all sorts of stuff. In fact in a low gear like on single track like this it'll It'll wheel you away from you if you're not real careful. The bike setup is really nice. It's got a dropper seat with a handlebar control. It's fairly standard, I know, but like not all bikes have it, so it's worth mentioning because it's convenient. Um, another super nice thing that I like about this bike is it's got handlebar controls for suspension lockout. So while the suspension is not as plush as I'd like it to be or like responsive, um, if you're doing any kind of like road riding or smooth climbs and you don't like the pumping of the suspension, it's really easy to lock it out. There's just two-step lockout on the handlebar control, which is really nice. This is a 29 inch version. I'm riding the large frame. Get a frame that fits you, of course. I got my wife the same bike in a small frame with 27 inch wheels, 27.5, which is super cool because that gives her better reach to the ground. Um, it's got this nice walk function. So you hit the walk button and hold down plus and it'll give you just a little bit of push because it's not a light bike. Motor and battery are pretty heavy. So you're going like two miles an hour, the bike's pushing itself. So I'm not pushing it up the hills when it gets stuck like that. The tires are mid fat, so they've got decent traction, which is nice for an e-bike. You want to be able to put down some traction, but obviously like I still got stuck in the sand. It's, it's not a motorcycle. Like you've got a pedal, which you can hear I'm hard breathing. Um, I want to put to bed this idea that e-bikes are lazy. They're not. Like I've got asthma and I'm working hard enough with the motor turn most of the way up that I'm like triggering the edge of my asthma. So it's definitely a workout and it's a whole lot more fun than going to the gym. In between dirt bike rides, I need a way to maintain my fitness. So cardio, leg muscles, uh, grip strength, all that stuff. The other thing that I discovered mountain biking is it's really good for cross training. So if you're a dirt bike rider, traction control, balance, line choice, you know, handlebar grip, like control, all those things, brake management, all those things are not identical, but like, I don't know, 75, 80% crossover skills, like directly crossover. So like you really have to properly ride the bike to not eat shit. And in my time on the mountain bike, like I'm cross training, I'm slowing down, not trying to get killed out here, practicing lines, practicing balance, practicing brake control, body position, and all that good stuff. And then I, I get better at those things and I bring those skills back to my dirt biking life. And then I'm, I'm like, notice it'll be better on the dirt bike, which is fun. I guess like the bottom line of e-biking, for those of you who think that it's like a cop-out, I think the point of all of this stuff is to have fun. And if you're not having fun, then you're, you're doing it wrong. And I'm gonna tell you the e-bike's one of the, it's the way that I found to have the most fun mountain biking. Back to the Scott e-bike. So definitely middle of the road. This bike runs about 5,500. I ordered it online from a shop in Oregon which is cool because there's no, um, you don't pay sales tax because um, Oregon doesn't have any. So whatever your state is, like you don't pay it. Shipping wasn't that bad. They did a nice job setting it up. I don't know if it's technically an enduro stance, like geometry for the bike, but it feels a lot like enduro. Um, I came off of a S-Works enduro bike. I really like that, that um, geometry because it gives your bike a lot of stability. It feels like riding a dirt bike. And for the price range, like I absolutely got my money's worth have a ton of fun on this bike and uh you know if you're looking for mid-range you're not trying to break the bank but you want like a decent like full suspension all-around bike with with all the features you've got one here you can easily spend 10 12 grand on a bike you probably aren't going to get more features you're going to get higher end suspension higher end brakes maybe a lighter weight like they make carbon frames i don't know that lighter weight matters that much with an e-bike because your motor's making up the difference you're not going to get that much more in terms of stuff you can do about the bike it's just going to be whatever a more expensive version of this basically that like this is not a downhill bike i wouldn't recommend you take it on the ski slopes and drop off shit. it's not going to work well for that it just it's like way too stiff um and, and not compliant but um for trail riding fire roads you know moderate trails some climbing this bike's fantastic um super recommend it